The game's designer slowly rears their head over the trench, fearful and shook at the thought of the return of their latest foe. No, we're not talking about Unity's absurd pricing model. This time, it's bold and in your face. Playtesting and iteration. In this battle against the game's designer's most important and formidable opponent, I want to ask, how do games designers effectively utilize playtesting to successfully iterate on their design? It's a big question, I know, so let's unbox it. How do games designers, that's people who engage in the practice of making and designing games, utilize playtesting? That being gathering specific people to play a game with the purpose of collecting data and information to successfully iterate on their design, or how to change or update a design from the data and information that was collected. Now, if you've ever made a game or looked into the process of making video games, chances are you've run into the term playtesting. Now, I'm willing to bet you were left confused, daunted, or overwhelmed when trying to first approach it. That's definitely how I felt as a games design student when it came to engaging in playtests for my designs, and many of my peers felt the same way. It wasn't until my final year of my course did I stop to examine how designers successfully handled playtesting and try to apply their knowledge myself. Even though there's no objectively correct way of conducting playtests, I hope that this video encourages more new games designers to engage in the playtesting process and give them the confidence to do so by showing them the methods of playtesting and iteration that I've found and also show them how I've ended up using them in my projects. Pre-playtest. So, you have a design and you're looking to playtest it. What do you do? Where do you start? I ask you to consider two things first. Who are your playtesters? And where are they playtesting? The playtesters, people that play your game in a playtest, that are found can greatly influence the type of data that they might give. If they're familiar with certain games, it may influence how quickly they're able to learn and pick up your design. If they only play one certain type of game, it could mean that they're not accustomed to a different type of play. Tracy Fullerton, a games designer, describes in her book, the Games Design Workshop, the ideal playtester as someone who represents your target audience, which is extremely helpful for gathering people who can better understand your designs early on, but it's still important to consider those outside of your target audience, as they play your game without a strong understanding of it, which may be important if you're trying to figure out how to teach new players. When finding playtesters, always consider what they already know about your game and what bias they might have about it. Each playtester is unique in that what they've already played and what they haven't already played will influence what data and information a games designer can find. To find these playtesters, the designer can look to both the real world and the internet. Is there a physical club or an event with people that can playtest your game? Maybe there's an online forum, or a server that you can look to. Where there are people, there are playtesters, and where there are playtesters, you can playtest. Be aware though, the environment the playtest is conducted in can influence how playtesters play, the mood of the playtesters, how long they play, and a bunch of other factors. Playtesters playing at home may be more comfortable in long sessions rather than playtesters at a busy convention, for example. When I conducted playtests for my final semester project, a silly, funny, first-person platformer, I gathered a variety of playtesters, people who were new to platforming games, and people who were experienced in them, in many different spaces, such as a classroom, an esports club, and also in my own bedroom. Each unique playtester and each unique playtest environment I engaged with influenced the type of data and information I collected. During playtests, after gathering playtesters and a playtest location, the designer must now conduct a playtest. Consider why and how you will playtest. Are there any goals for your playtest? Are you observing a specific part or a feature of your game? It's good to have a specific goal. 
but it can be as open as testing the experience so far. That's completely valid. These goals can guide the type of observations the designer will be making and the data they'll be collecting. Consider what information you want to reveal to playtesters before they play your game. Do you want to give them an overview of specific details like the game's story or controls? Or do you want them to jump in blind and only experience the game from what they play? The goals designers set for playtests can be a good indication about what not to reveal to playtesters. If designers are playtesting on if playtesters understand the controls of their game, consider not telling them the controls in depth, for example. Before playtesters play, encourage them to be vocal when they're playing your game. Playtester emotions or how they are feeling when they're playing your game are very important pieces of information the designer can gather as hints to how playtesters experience your game, or parts of it. Let them know that anything that they don't understand about the game isn't their fault as a player, but signals to the designers areas that could be improved upon. In a way, the ideal playtester energy is similar to YouTube Blitz players and Twitch streamers. To gather these hints, note taking can be an important tool for the designer in a playtest session. Notes can be observations about what a playtester is doing, if they're struggling in parts of a level, what they think they understand, what they don't think they understand, things that they say, any bits of written information about how a playtester experiences a game. In addition, when playtesters are playtesting, it is very helpful to record their screen. This allows the designer to look back at a playtest session, to look at how playtesters played in detail and confirm their observations of how playtesters played and player behavior. I encourage designers to do the same and record their playtests as it enables a close study of how playtesters played the game. Just make sure that playtesters are aware of this and you have their enthusiastic consent to record the game screen and audio. When I conducted playtests for my project, I would give a brief introduction about the game and encourage playtesters to be as vocal as they could. I made sure to record all of them through OBS, a free screen recording software, after asking permission from my playtesters if I could do so. For most sessions, I would reveal as little as possible, or close to nothing about the game, and let them play through the game as they experienced it, with many goals of testing specific features, like movement or certain areas in a level. As they played, I would write down notes on my phone about what areas they would spend lots of time in, where they struggled, what they would say, and what emotions they felt when playing. Post Playtest After playtesters are done playing your game, be sure to thank them for the time that they spent playing your game. Let them ask any questions about what they played, and try to answer them with an explanation, or say a future iteration or update will try to answer that for them. Many designers are familiar with surveys or questionnaires that ask playtesters thoughts about the game that they played. Be very careful when doing this. It can be very often that a playtester may give back unhelpful responses in these formats, filled with information that could be detrimental to the overall design. This type of information was dubbed evil data at a GDC talk in 2017 by games designer Adrian De Jong, where he went on to explain how evil data, that is, information that's contradictory, inconsistent, or difficult to interpret, is found in many ways of getting playtested data. It is a games designer's role to identify this type of evil data and filter it out when conducting playtests and reviewing the feedback. From the playtests I conducted, it helped to ask myself, if I changed my game based on this feedback, does it reflect the direction I want my game to be? Overall, have confidence in your design and vision for your game. Stick to what you want your game to be about, and try to make observations about how playtesters play, and not what they tell you about what they think should be changed. Try to come to these conclusions about what you should change yourself. That is the challenge of playtesting. The challenge 
figuring out where to go next. Iteration is an integral part of the playtesting cycle, and designers should change their game from what they observed and concluded in the playtests. The observations designers collect in playtest sessions and recordings can indicate the direction on where to take the game. Was there something players struggled with? Was there a mechanic players really enjoyed? These observations and questions are hints or glimpses into the future on where the designer can take their game next and iterate on it. Try to come to a conclusion by answering these questions to help frame or guide the next iteration of your design. When iterating on a design, changes can be small, like a texture change, or as big as a new mechanic. But overall, any change based upon observations and conclusions of playtests are iterations on the design. During my final project post playtest reflections, I found this the most difficult part of the playtesting process. Figuring out what information was helpful and filtering out what wasn't so I could come to conclusions about how to change the game. I would gather a lot of data and a lot of feedback, but often it felt overwhelming when looking at all of it. So I took a step back and looked at the game. It was about being absurdly silly, traversing with fluid and satisfying movement, and being creative and encouraging players to explore what they could do. These creative pillars helped me frame all the information and all the feedback to filter out the ones that could break the design and gather those that could make it continue to iterate. I think it helps to identify what the core pillars of your design are and gather feedback and information that fosters it and makes it grow. Now that was a lot to go through and I hope it hasn't been too overwhelming. One of my lecturers, Douglas Wilson, once said in a class, and I'm paraphrasing, in essence, games design is playtesting and iteration, which felt scary at first, but after fighting the beast that is playtesting and iteration, I think I can confidently say that this is a fight designers can win. Fight that battle, make your game, get people playing it, and see how you can make it into the best version it can be. Thank you and goodbye.